Good morning, everyone. I am here today to do one more lesson for our week. Happy Friday. I know that I am so excited for the weekend, even though I've been home. We've still been working every day and I'm still ready for a break and just to relax this weekend and watch a good movie and enjoy being at my house. I hope that you guys get to do the same because I know you guys have been working really hard this week. So today we're going to talk about rounding numbers. I know you saw a lot of practice with that in the week one packet and I wanted to make sure that you were refreshed on how to do that and ready to go through and correct any mistakes you might have made in that week one packet. So I'm going to jump into the lesson and share my screen and we'll get started. All right, so we have a spot review to work on this morning. Just to get you guys warmed up, there are three problems that I want everybody to work on. Again, take some time on your scratch paper, make it neat and organized just like you would at school. Think about what part paper should look like. Pause the video here and take as much time as you need to answer these three spot review questions and then I'll share out the answers and you can check your work once you're done, but stay paused until you have all three done correctly. All right, so the first one says a cat weighs 12 pounds and a dog weighs four times as much. How much does the dog weigh? Write an equation. So here I have drawn out a tape diagram to help me. I said the cat weighed 12 pounds and the dog weighed four times as much as the cat. So I made that same box four times. I saw that this dog box represents 12 times four. And when I solved it, I knew that 12 times four is 48. So I would say that the dog weighs 12 times, or weighs 48 pounds. Four times 12 was 48, so the dog weighs 48 pounds. Question two. Was divide 948 by three. So if you did the last lesson, you got quite the practice with this, so this should have been an easy one for those of us who did the dividing lesson this week. Three goes into nine three times. Three times three is nine. When I subtract, I get zero. Bring down the four. Three goes into four one time. One times three is three. Subtract, get one. Bring down the eight. And three goes into 18, sorry six times, three times six is 18, and I have zero left over, so there is no remainder. Again, I can check my work by taking my quotient of 316 and multiplying it by three. Six times three is 18, carry the one, three times one is three plus one is four, and three times three is nine. I know I'm correct because I got my starting number, as my answer in my check. So give yourself a check on your paper if you had 316 as your answer for number two. And our third one is a little refresher of what we were working on right before we left school. I have Mario eats two thirds cup of cereal each day. How many cups will he eat in 12 days? So I'm doing two thirds 12 times to figure out how much cereal Mario eats. We'll get the hang of this board one of these days. Remember when we multiply a fraction by a whole number, we're taking the numerator and multiplying it by that whole number and my denominator stays the same. Because really this is just two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds 12 times. And when we add fractions, our denominator doesn't change, but our numerator does. So I'm gonna get 24 thirds. And I know that's an improper fraction, so I'm going to turn it into a mixed number. And I'm going to see how many threes go into 24. How many three thirds can I pull out? I can pull out three thirds, six thirds, 
nine thirds, 12 thirds, 15 thirds, 18 thirds, 21 thirds, 24 thirds. So I was able to pull out eight holes and there was no fraction left over. So we would say that Mario eats eight cups of cereal in 12 days. Give yourselves a check if you had this one correct. If you didn't, go through and find your mistakes. Where did your work stop looking like mine? And if someone's around helping you, explain your mistake to them. We know once we talk about our mistakes, we're a lot less likely to make them again. Great job with this warm up, everybody. So we are gonna jump into today's lesson. I'm gonna go back to sharing my PowerPoint and give you guys the application problem for today. All right, so today's application problem says, Jose's parents bought a used car and a new motorcycle and a snowmobile. The car cost $8,999, the motorcycle cost $9,690, and the snowmobile cost $4,419. About how much money did they spend on the three items? I put that word about in all caps because that's a number that's a word that is very important for us to know how to solve this problem. We do not want to know exactly how much, we want to know about how much. So thinking back to the beginning of the year when we first did this unit, we want to round each of these numbers so that they're easier to add. If I'm looking here, I see the thousands place is the biggest number. So I'm going to choose to round each of these numbers to the thousands place before I get the total amount. Use that helpful hint to help you and take your time to work through this application problem. Go ahead and pause your video. Take as much time as you need and then start it back up once you have an answer to this application problem. All right, so we are going to jump into about how much money Jose's parents spent on these three items. So if I'm looking at his motorcycle, it says they spent We'll do the car first. On the car, they spent $8,999. Well, we have all these places with numbers in them that's going to make this harder to add. And since we just need an estimate or they're asking about how much, I'm going to round and I'm going to round to the thousands place. So I'm going to use my vertical number line to help me. Right now, I have eight thousands. If I bump that underlined number up one more, I would have 9,000. And then I need to think, what's in the middle? What's the midpoint of 8,000 and 9,000? These are my two endpoints, and I need to find the midpoint. 8,500 is in the middle. And we are more than 8,500 with 8,999. So that tells me we round up to say the squiggly line means approximately. The car cost approximately $9,000 or about $9,000. We're going to do the same thing with the motorcycle. The motorcycle, they said, cost $9,690. And again, we want to just round so that it's a number that's easier to add with. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to underline that thousands place because that's the place I'm going to round to. They didn't tell me, but I know if I round to the biggest place, I'll have the most zeros in my answer, and that means it'll be the easiest numbers to add up. So right now I have 9,000. If I were to bump that underline up, I'd have a 10,000. And then I think what's in the middle? We know our midpoints always have that magic number five because five is in the middle of zero and 10. 
So we have 9,500. And then I have to think, where would 9,690 go on the number line? It would go a little bit above 9,500. So again, I'm above the midpoint, so I round to my upper end point. And I would say that the motorcycle cost them about $10,000. And we have one item left to round the price for, and that is the snowmobile. And the snowmobile, they said, cost $4,419. So I'm going to underline my thousands place because that's the place I'm adding to. I have four thousands, one more thousand would be 5,000. So my number's in between 4,000 and 500,000. My midpoint would be 4,500. And my number would be a little bit below that midpoint. So if I'm below the midpoint, I'm closer to the lower end point. So I would say that the snowmobile costs them about $4,000. But the question asks, what did, about how much money did they spend on all three items? So now I need to take my three estimates, which were 10,000, 9,000, and 4,000, and add them up. Start in the ones. Four plus nine is 13. Here the one. So we'd say they spent about $23,000 on these items. Give yourselves a thumbs up and a check if you had this correct. If you didn't, again, go back, pause again, try to solve it again, see if you can spot your mistake. Look at where your work didn't look like mine and make sure you understand how to get it correct for next time. The great thing about the video is you can watch this explanation again and again until you make sure you understand every part of the work that I just did. We are going to go back to the PowerPoint. And we are going to now watch me model a little bit more of rounding. I'm going to take one number and round it to a whole bunch of different places. Remember to use a number line to support your rounding and watch and think about the work I'm doing because you're going to get a chance to practice on your own. All right, so I'm going to round the same number to a whole bunch of different places. So the number we're going to work with today is 231,562. And I'm going to round it to a whole bunch of different places. I'll start by rounding it to the nearest 10. We don't round it to the nearest one because that's where it is right now. It's at the nearest one hole. So when I set up my number line, everything bigger than my underlined place is going to stay. The only place that might change here is this underlined number might get bigger, and everything after my number line or my underlined number becomes a zero. So if I set my endpoint, I have 231,560 right now because I'm rounding to the nearest 10. So that means I'm only going to use numbers that I would say if I skip count by tens. If I skip count by tens, I'm not going to say 231,562, but I will eventually say 231,560. Then I take my underlined number and bump it up one so everything else stays the same as it was in the bottom endpoint. This will be 570. And my midpoint, I'm going to use the space, the place that is one smaller than my underlying number. So I'm going to have 231,565 because that's right in between 
560 and 570. And then I have to look and think, where does 231,562 go? It would go in between my midpoint and my lower endpoint. And if it's below my midpoint, then I round to my lower endpoint. So we say this is about 231,560 when we round it to the nearest 10. Shout out to Noah who just sent me as we're recording this, his exit ticket for the last lesson. I know lots of you have been working hard, keep it up. All right, we're gonna now round to the same number to another place. This time I wanna round it to the nearest hundred. So again, everything that was bigger then my underlying number is gonna stay when I choose my endpoints. I'm still gonna have 231,000, but I have 231,500. Again, if I'm rounding to the nearest 100, I have to choose numbers I would say when I skip count by 100. 100 more than that is 231,600. And then what's in the middle of 231,500 and 231,600? It's 231,000. 550. For me, when I'm choosing the midpoint, it helps me to just look at the part that I need. So I can just see what's in the middle of 500 and 600 and know that that's going to go with the 231,000. 231,562, which was our number, is a little bit bigger than our midpoint. So we round it to the upper endpoint and we say that it's about 231,600 when we round it to the nearest 100. We're going to do three more places with this same number and then you guys are gonna get a chance to show what you know and practice. So we're still rounding 231,562, but this time we're gonna round to the nearest thousand. So I'm gonna underline that thousands place and I'm going to set up my number line. Right now, I have 231,000. Everything after my number line becomes zeros because when I'm skip counting now, I'm skip counting by thousands, so I won't say anything in the hundreds, tens, or ones places. One more thousand is 232,000. And my midpoint would be 231,500. That magic five in our midpoint always goes in the place that's right next to our endpoint, or to our underlined space, sorry, to our underlined point. And now we have to put in 231,562. It's a little bit bigger than 231,500, which is our midpoint. So we're going to say this is approximately 232,000. Two more places to round to before you get to practice. We will round to the nearest 10,000 this time. So we can do the same number to lots of different places. Right now, I have 230,000. I'm skip counting by 10,000. And I will say 230,000 when I do that. One more would be 240,000. And my midpoint would be 235,000 because that's in the middle of 230,000 and 240,000. 231,562 would go below because it's smaller than 235,000. So we say rounding to the nearest 
10,000, we would get 230,000. Sorry, I'm gonna get used to this board and how it needs to go on the screen, I promise. And our last one, we can round to the nearest 100,000. I have 200,000 and I'm in between 200,000 and 300,000. Right in the middle of those two numbers would be 250,000. And we only have 231,562. So we're below that midpoint and we round down. So we say it's approximately 200,000. I know that rounding can be confusing, and I know that parents watching are probably like, what the heck? These number lines are wild. They do help, and students have done this in third grade. They did it at the beginning of fourth grade this year, so this is not new. They just need a refresher. So if we can use the vocabulary, use midpoints, endpoints from here, they will be good to go in this practice. As always, you can reach out if you still have questions after watching the video. I'm gonna put up the independent practice problems. And just as we've been doing, I want everybody to pause their screen once they're up. And take a second to work through these five. I'm going to put the answers up after this slide, so stay paused until you've worked through all five. Take your time, don't take shortcuts. And then once you have answers to all five, rounded to the places that I've said, you may move to the next, resume the slide and move to the next slide to see the answers. So here are our answers. Your goal as always should be to get at least four out of five correct. And I can't wait to see and hear who was able to do that. So here are your answers again. Go through and check your independent practice problems. And as always, we're going to end with an exit ticket. So there are 589,500 Apple employees in the US. Round that number to the following places. So in number one, you're gonna round that number to the nearest 100,000. And in number two, you're gonna round it to the nearest thousand. In order to score level five on this, I need to see neat organized work. I need to see number lines. And I need to know that you're taking your time and following the steps from the video. So can't wait to see your work. Remember to text me a picture. Happy Friday. Again, these videos are meant to be worked on at your own pace. I know we all have a lot going on. I know we have a lot of people in our houses that we need to share the technology with. So this does not have a due date necessarily, but throughout this weekend and next week, if you get a chance to work on it, please send me your exit ticket answers. I can't wait to see them. Stay safe, guys. Miss you. Bye.